Hey guys, this is Tim from Tim's Electronics Lab and welcome back to a new video. So in this video I'll be soldering the printer control board that I created for the project that I'm working on. Uh, this project allows you to control your 3D printer using home automation. It also allows you to read the power consumption values and it will allow you to turn it on or off. Uh, and it allows for controlling some lights that are above your printer or in your printer area. Now, of course, the Gerber file slash KiCad project is in the description uh, and you'll need a couple of things. And one of them is the ESP32. Now, this is the 36 pin version uh, and the PCB is also created for a 36 pin version. So please keep that in mind. I'm not sure if the uh, 32 or 30 pin versions are compatible pin wise so please do uh, check that before you order the wrong uh, parts uh, you'll need a couple of resistors a 4.7k a 10k and a 1k resistor you'll need two transistors an S8050 and a BC547 You'll also need a MOSFET, the RF3205. You'll need a 12 volt to 3.3 volt uh, buck converter. Now it can also be an LDO, but buck converter is a lot more efficient. Since we're using the 330 volts AC to 12 volts DC, we've got a limited amount of input current so we don't want uh, some wasting in the LDO uh, you also need two polyfuses these are rated for 2 amps you'll need some capacitors uh, some terminals, some screw terminals a DC terminal a relay and you'll also need uh, some pin headers uh, a DHT22 is also used. You'll need one of those. You'll need a PZEM004T. Now, it doesn't really matter which version you've got, as long as you've got that 3.3 volt mod installed on it, then it's all good. And I think finally you also need two uh, diodes. I'm using the 1N4000. Uh, 001 for those um, and of course you'll need your soldering iron so I suggest that we start off with these smaller components transistor and resistors now these diodes are here to um, protect from backfeed into the printer since there's a input a 12 volt input that's that can be used uh, for the printer to yeah, get the printer's 12 volt internal power supply connected to your board then you'll do some and then you've got more current capabilities for the LED since it's pretty limited um, so let's actually measure the resistors see which one's which so 4.7 Kilo ohms needs to go to R1. So let's install that into R1. That is the transistor that controls the relay. 10K resistor that needs to go to the DHT22 data line. So that should go here. And finally, the 1K resistor goes into R3 and that's used to control the MOSFET that's used to control the LED that are most of the items installed on the PCB I thought I had a uh, pin header that perfectly matched the amount of pins that's on this ESP but as you're able to see, where's the camera? As you're able to see, I'm missing one. But that's uh, the COK pin. Doesn't really matter. And let's 
put the header over here so we can now that's the shame with these headers is that when you're cutting them like this you're always destroying one single pin slot because yeah that's the one you're cutting it in so it's really a waste of headers at some times but I guess that's just the way it is now I think that our soldering iron has heated up and let's do the transistor first Damn, these legs are really small, man. Like so. Let's actually remove these caps. They're a bit annoying. Alright. Now let's solder the other transistor and then let's hope that this one goes a little bit better. I need something in the there. Cool, so now it's up to the capacitors, I think. So C6 and C5 are 47 microfarad capacitors, rated for 16 volts. And these are the coupling caps for the various voltage rails Now solder the bigger ones. These are 220 microfarad capacitors. I think they're also rated for 16 volts, but let's check. Oh, 10 volts. They are across the 12 volt rail. That's not. Uh, so these need to go over there. And let me find some others for these two, because they're not 12 volt compatible and they will just blow up. Yeah, these are 3.3 volt caps and these are the 12 volt caps and these are 220 microfarads 16 volt caps so these should do good that I checked it otherwise we would have a uh, blow up and it's just a other waste of capacitors now I recycled these from various audio video receivers the gold ones I recycled from an old Sony I think it's called the STR DB 940 it's a really it was a really high quality amplifier it still is actually by today's standards and it's initial gold rated caps all over literally a gold mine And if I see one where I can get my hands on, I'll probably buy it if it's a, a good price. Because it, it's, oh man, it's such a good audio video receiver. And the others, yeah, I just got from uh, various random other receivers that were probably broken. The Sony is also broken, that's why I, I um, turned it down. But So now let's heat up this ground region. Now 
Now there is one thing, the fuses don't actually fit inside the holes on the PCB. Now I already fixed that in the schematic and the PCB file, but as you are able to see they won't go inside the holes, so I need to solder them top mount like so. A lot of solder. Which will probably just work fine, but it's not entirely what I was hoping for. Now of course everything is fused, the 12 volt incoming rail or the yeah the no the 3.3 volt rail and the 12 volt incoming rail yeah that they're all fused so now let's solder the 3.3 volt buck converter now these two are the inputs this is the ground and this is the output so you need to solder it on here like this with the inductor facing that way that way so but first we're going to solder the pins to this PCB my soldering tip also dries up rather quickly which is some a bit annoying we can just flush or flood this with solder That's soldered. Now we can just insert it like this. Oh, I need to bend this. Let's actually solder the ESP. Now on the sales screen, the position of the USB port is located. So you won't mess that up. And let's install it like so. Now obviously I'm installing it in a header, so if something goes wrong with the board, I can just replace it. That's always... Uh, the extra price for the headers are worth the effort. Otherwise you would have to desolder the thing manually each time and that's just... Now let's solder in this thing. I think it went, yeah, it went like this. Now let's connect the DC jack. Now the DC jack's output is the same as the two screw terminal block that's over here, but this is just yeah, DC jack. Now the soldering process hasn't been on in the most optimal uh, Like so. Now let's solder the terminal block over here. And now it's time to solder the two uh, terminal blocks next to each other. 
or you can just solder one four pin terminal block that's also fine and also will work now I've chosen to put two of them uh, for better current capabilities because yeah system might uh, also get some high current values like so now the AC connectors Ooh. with the exposed, well not copper but traces let's solder the earthing connection first now the onboard earth connection is not connected to the ground wire of the rest of the system hmm it's not getting soldered properly I think This one is. This one isn't. I think now it is, yes. And I can already spot a little problem. Or isn't it a big problem? The ESP is a little bit in the way of the relays footprint. But we can bend the pins a bit and there you go. Now it's... It still fits. How nice. Look! It's a little bit to the side, but that doesn't really matter for functionality. Now, these traces are left open on purpose. You of course want to solder them for increased current capabilities. You can put some extra solder on there. So that's what we're going to do. Now let's solder the 12 volt AC to DC converter in place. Alright, now let's solder up the neutral and the live connection for the AC DC converter All right, so I guess that that's well, Almost everything is thought we do have a couple of headers left so let's cut them into size we need two, four. Now 
like so. Now there is a connector for a rotary encoder. Well, that's up to you if you're going to use it. Uh, but finally, we also need a three pin connector for the DHT22 or you might solder the wires directly to them. And we're ready to rock and roll. Now these are a bit... There you go, that's better. So now you can actually test it with your lab bench power supply. And the DHT goes on like this. That's fortunate because now it will fit. You can actually test this with your lab bench power supply by just inserting the 12 volt in there and the ground and then you shouldn't see any magic smoke but first before we do that I'm going to clean the PCB a bit because that's well quite uh, it's quite a need of a clean got the last leads so obviously before we apply uh, 220 volts or 230 volts AC to it I'm going to apply 12 volts DC so let's just do that So this is the 12 volt, this one, and this is the 5 of the ground, not the 5 of the ground. Please don't try to apply 5 volts to it. So what we should see is we should see the screen come on. We should not see any smoke. And when we're lucky, we might hear the relay click one or two times. So let's turn it off on at 12 volts. Of course, do a current limit. to do just a little above 12 volts oh what okay it uh, came loose I was like I'm not seeing anything is the current maxing out no the current is not maxing out why is it doing anything are the diodes okay but yeah when something comes loose it's not doing anything so here we go again there we go. Connecting. Hey! And we see a healthy 400 milli... Oh no, 4 milliamps. No data in DHTQ. Could be connecting. Yeah, there is still a little bug that the ESP crashes because of something. I'm not sure what it is. But, yeah, it's... It's drawing 100 milliamps. So that's very healthy. And we hear the relay clicking. That's very good. I can't see any magic smoke. So that's uh, all quite positive. And we just saved uh, the capacitors. Eh? I mean, otherwise it would be. Uh, and the PZEM is not connected, which is. Now let's actually grab the PZEM module and make sure it's off. Let's connect that. I've connected a, a light transformer to the AC output so that this lights up when there's AC. But please do be careful because mains can be lethal. So as you can see there is now AC on this thing. And let's hope it goes through the boot presses connected. And I've put a retained flag on this. So we should see it. Yeah, it's connected. As you can see 230 volts it says right now so it's connected to the PZEM and it's not connected to the DHT which uh, 
is a problem. So, well, I unplugged it, but now comes the the more dangerous part. We are actually going to run it off uh, the mains. Let's actually measure the continuity between the wires. No continuity, let's measure the resistance. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, this is the resistance that's caused by the AC to DC thingy. Now the PZEM won't display any values right now because it's not getting power from mains. This is going to be uh, very exciting. Let's connect it to mains and see what it does. Hey. This is connected or this is on. So it's working, which is uh, very good. Big thumbs up for that. Now there are still a couple of things I need to fix because, yeah, as you saw, the, the whole thing crashed and it did not work as expected. Yeah, I need to fix that. I also need to um, fix the DHT and well, I will hopefully have that all done by the next video. Then I'll also create a 3D printed case that this all goes in um, and I'll assemble it together with you. So please let me know if you like this type of project. Um, so yeah, if you do, then maybe I can do more of them. Because I did certainly like creating uh, this project, this PCB. It's a really a fun project actually. So please let me know down below if you uh, like this, uh, this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and stay subscribed so you'll not miss the next one. And uh, well, that's it for now. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, hey, hello. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you over here. Well, if you want, you can also view two other videos of me. So make sure to click them and don't forget to subscribe and like so you always get notified of my new videos.